Cuprous oxide or copper oxide rectifiers were first manufactured in 1927 in the US. A few years later, a British company named Vestia Gauss also started producing them. Thus, the devices received the name of Vestectus, which is a derivative of Detector. In Russia, they were also called Tvitectus, which is also a derivative of Detector. However, here the particle T was replaced by abbreviation ZVI. It stood for the name of the laboratory that produced those devices, CVI, Central National Research Radio Laboratory. In principle, cuprous oxide diodes have a very simple design. If you take a copper plate and place it in an oven at a certain temperature, a thin layer of copper oxide will form on its surface. Copper oxide 1, cuprum O. Then you need to add the second electrode. It should be made of soft metal like lead or tin. And that's it. This small sandwich will be the diode. The layer of copper oxide provides only unidirectional conduction. The resistance of the layer when conducing current in one direction is many times higher than the resistance when the current is running in the opposite direction. The resistance ratio between both directions in good copper oxide rectifiers can reach several thousands. However, it is difficult to achieve such good resistance ratio in mesh-produced devices. Thus, in most cases, this value is about 1000. The most interesting thing is that this type of rectifier is basically a Schottky diode. It uses a metal semiconductor junction. Here is what the Radio Front magazine wrote about copper oxide diodes back in 1936. This is a miniature copper oxide rectifier that appeared in England about four years ago. It was named a V-Tector. Last year it was manufactured in our country, in Gorky. It received the name of Tvitector. The tests have shown very good results. In most cases, Tvitectors work much better than any first-grade calendar crystal. Tvitectors are very stable. There is no need to look for a good point. Thus, it can be successfully used in crystal sets. In order to build such a device, you will need chemically pure copper. It is very hard to obtain under normal conditions. Electrical copper is not chemically pure. Besides, to manufacture a good quality copper oxide rectifier, you must heat the plates to a very exact temperature level. The temperature must be very stable. Fluctuations must not exceed 1%. Copper oxide usually forms at the temperature of 1000 Celsius degrees. Thus, the changes shouldn't exceed 10 Celsius degrees. These requirements are very hard to meet if you are an amateur working at home. So we can say that it's extremely difficult to manufacture copper oxide rectifiers in one's own. Today, this type of diode is out of use. They can be found only in museums.